Hello, welcome to 15th episode of Curiosity. That is the December episode of the Curiosity. What did I learn in November of 2020? So this episode covers stories across the disciplines, including sleep deprivation, COVID-19 treatment and vaccines, narcissism, human brain as a universe, gut microbiota with Alzheimer's disease connection, high intensity interval workout, that is HIIT, and so on plus news, upcoming observances and opportunities for the December. So stay tuned. The first story of the week is of course about the Oxford COVID-19 vaccine and it shows a very strong immune response. So it's uh, you know reported to be 99 percentage after the second booster and after the first booster it is 70 percentage. This is the you know the, the third stage of the clinical trials. Uh, you, you can see the phase three trials. So this included the people of all ages raising hopes that it can protect age groups most at risk from the coronavirus. So on average it is 70 percentage effective which is pretty good news. So two other positives of the Oxford vaccine is that it should only be need to be stored at 2 degree to 8 degrees. So it's very practical in developing countries like India. And it costs just over pound sterling just two you know per vaccine to produce so it is quite affordable to the masses so it's it's a very good news uh, next story is about the, the narcissism the psychological trait you know the self-love extreme self-love is what what you call it as narcissism isn't it so narcissists love being pandemic essential workers so they would love to post more about the uh, contribution about the pandemic in their social media so if you have any friends who is really fond of uh, posting uh, the pics of this pandemic essential works you know so then chance are high that the person is narcissist you know so that is what the study indicates so because they always want to feel important the next story is about actual COVID-19 cases could be six times greater than the official figure that is really alarming for us. A newly modeled estimate from the United States, Australia, Canada, South Korea and 11 countries in the Europe suggests that official figures could be struggling to capture the full scale of the outbreak. So that's an alarming news. So six times and it's not just from one country but various countries across the globe. So the estimates could be pretty accurate. So the next story is from the, the, the first severe COVID-19 patient successfully treated with human recombinant soluble ACE2 that is HRS ACE2 with disappearance of a coronavirus swiftly from the serum nasal cavity and lungs and a reduction of the inflammatory cytokine levels leading to the significant clinical improvement that is a, a paper published in the Nature. So that's an amazing news, you know, the recombinant human ACE2. So it's basically this ACE2 is nothing but a surface receptor, which is something like a, a doorknob on the mucosal, you know, cells of our body. For example, in our, uh, you know, the, the the epithelial lining of the lungs and nasal cavity, and even in our intestine. So ACE2 is a receptor. So that, that is where the virus attacks, the spike protein of the virus attaches. And ACE2, if you actually make this ACE2 recombinantly, that is genetic engineer manner, and this ACE2 can be administered. So the virus simply stick on this ACE2 receptor without sticking onto our real ACE2 receptor. So that's a, that's a very smart way uh, to treat the, the you know the COVID-19. Next story is uh, you know again about the COVID-19. Testing half the population weekly with inexpensive rapid COVID-19 test would drive the virus towards elimination within weeks even if the tests are less sensitive than the gold standard so you really don't have to go with the gold standard test like the rtbcr but even antibody based tests are pretty good so this could also lead to personalized stay at home orders without shutting down the restaurant bars retail and schools so without much hampering the economy uh, this kind of uh, you know the first level antibody based test could uh, really help you know it's something like a, a middle way not too much uh, into the economic depression and not too severe you know and not too uh, easy right without any mask or stay at home order it's going to be really tough isn't it so it's just like the midway but for that you have to test half of the population with inexpensive uh, antibody based tests you know so again about COVID-19, it has enabled the statisticians uh, a, a great natural experiment, you know, it was unplanned. 
So the natural experiment caused with the shutdown of schools due to COVID-19 pandemic has led to two-hour shift in the sleep of the developing adolescents. Longer sleep duration, improved sleep quality, and less daytime sleepiness compared to those experienced from the regular school time schedule. So it's really a good news, isn't it? So how the COVID-19 is, uh, uh, you know, improving the sleep routines of the adolescents. And the new studies finds that psilobin, the psilobin is active ingredient of the magic mushroom or shrooms. If you ever been to Amsterdam, you know what shrooms are, isn't it? It's basically a psychoactive substance in the magic mushroom is called psilobin. So this study finds that the psilobin greatly and quickly relieves depression. So it comes in handy for treating depression, the psilobin molecule. Next is about psychology. Singles who are satisfied with their friends are less likely to desire a, a relationship partner. So if you are satisfied with your life with a, a good connection of the friends, then why would you ever need to have a romantic partner? That's a very interesting study. Next is people who feel supported and loved by others tend to be more open-minded, accepting of opposite views and willing to see multiple perspectives. So this is a key and it's also very important for, uh, you know, for parenting. If you love your kids and if you really, if your kids are drawn in a conducive environment where uh, they feel supported and loved by others, then they're much more likely to be broad minded. You know, the worldview is much more likely to be accepting. Next is the governor of Kansas issued an executive order requiring wearing masks in the public spaces effective July 3rd, 2020 subject to country authority to opt out. So when well, county authorities can opt out and they, they can sustain with this order. And then what has happened? What is the consequence of this order from the Kansas? After July 3rd, COVID-19 incidences decreased in 24 countries with mask mandates. That means that those counties where the masks were mandated, but continue to increase in 81 counties without such mask mandates. So it's really alarming friends. Mask mandates help. You know, that is what this study uh, shows. Next is that adults with the healthiest sleep patterns, that is morning risers, sleeping seven to eight hours a day and no frequent insomnia, snoring or excessive daytime sleepiness, experienced a 42% reduction in the risk of heart failure compared to those with unhealthy sleep patterns. So sleeping really helps. So sleeping is the best meditation as per the Lai Lama, isn't it? We covered that in one of our earlier episode of the Curiosity. Yes, sleep is the greatest medicine. Sensation of feeling chills while listening to the music. Have you ever experienced? I had, you know, especially with the trance music, cyclic trance music, you know, and also some of these melodious guzzles. So this is associated with the power of theta waves in the brain's orbifrontal cortex. So the work builds on other studies suggesting that the music can also trigger brain's reward system, even though it doesn't provide a tangible survival benefit. Very interesting study, isn't it? Scientists confirm the correlation in humans between an imbalance in the gut microbiota and development of amyloid plagues in the brain which are at the origin of the neurodegenerative disorders characteristics of Alzheimer's disease. Very interesting piece, isn't it? The microbiota in your gut, the intestinal bacteria, uh, of course, it can release a lot of biochemicals. So we are only starting to learn more about it. And these biochemicals might be, uh, you know, influencing how the amyloid plate develop, you know, startling relevation, isn't it? Next story is also about the sleep. Sleep loss hijacks the brain's activity during learning. Getting only half a night's sleep, as many medical workers and military persons often do, hijacks the brain's ability to unlearn fear-related memories, you see? So that the ability to unlearn is also extremely important, isn't it? That is actually being hampered. So it might put people at greater risk of conditions such as anxiety and PTSD, that is post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, that is what the, the study from the CDC shows. So sleep is really important for learning and uh, you know the psychological well-being. Next is from politics. Conservatives are more likely to express concerns about the climate change when framed as a national security concern and communicated by members of the armed services. So this could be a very good strategy 
to maintain the mask and physical distancing among conservative population extreme religious people you know they uh, tend to accept whatever uh, the army people you know uh, speak up and if you present it as a national security threat then the conservatives are more likely to accept it because conservatives are also more likely to be extreme patriots you know chauvinists there is maybe that is one reason why uh, the, the military personas, uh, you know, advises to work, uh, convince the conservatives. U.S. counties that voted Republican over Democrat in 2016 presidential election exhibited 14 percentage less physical distancing between March and May 2020, with subsequently higher COVID-19 infection and fatality growth rates in pro-Trump counties. That is what the Nature article says. So it's really interesting. Republican versus Democrat. So the COVID-19 becomes a lot more severe in those counties where Republicans were elected. So, well, uh, you know, correlation doesn't mean causation. There might be several underlying uh, conditions. So, under, uh, you know, uh, a lot of other variants that are influencing the effect. For example, uh, counties where the Republicans are major might be economically backward. You know, so I mean, uh, things are really complicated, but still the story is published in Nature and it's really interesting. Next is story from the psychology. People who are psychologically flexible have better romantic and family relationships. It's about being open to experiences, experiencing thoughts and feelings without obsessively clinging to them and continuing to take step towards a God, even in the face of setbacks. So dogmaticism is just the opposite. You know, the people who are dogmatic, strained, romantic and family relationship, isn't it? But if you're really flexible, psychologically flexible, you tend to have a better family and, you know, romantic relationship. Very interesting, isn't it? New evidence of the illusory suffering reward association. People mistakenly expect suffering will lead to fortuitous rewards and irrational just world belief that undue suffering deserves to be compensated to help to restore the balance so if you ever suffer then you know chances are high that you tend to believe that uh, you know the outcome is going to be positive so there is nothing like that there is nothing like suffering reward association that is that could be the reason uh, why uh, most of the religion in the world preach on this point if you suffer the reward is waiting for you but it might not be true too so this association forms the basis of most religions and has also been used to great effect by the rulers throughout the history you know suffering your suffering is good because ultimately you are suffering for the betterment the the just world kind of argument so that doesn't sound sound in philosophy you see so as interactions increasingly take place online People find information that confirms to their existing beliefs, making them less willing to listen to the alternative. That is the same thing called confirmation bias, a cognitive bias. So it, this exacerbates a filter bubbles and explains why public debates become polarized as people become impervious to the opposing arguments. So how social media is actually fueling this or exacerbating this uh, echo chamber or filter bubbles where you're being actually you know uh, more likely to be seeing the post that you might like you know so today i was actually listening to the podcast uh, through the freakonomics and it says that you know most of the fake news or even political fake news are not funded you know it is actually is propagating because people who are actually part of their filter bubble they start propagating it you know so you really don't need any money to fund these fake news propagation very interesting isn't it so social media companies are equally responsible with their algorithms favoring echo chambers so for example if you're a democrat chances are high that your facebook you know if you open the feed you will see more and more democratic posts if you're a republican you will see a lot more trump posts so that is how the algorithms work Next is exciting how the human brain is, uh, you know, uh, resembling the entire universe. A new analysis shows that the distribution of fluctuation within the cerebellum neural network follows the same progression of distribution of matter in the cosmic web. Very exciting, isn't it? This probably has less to do with the brains and stars than it has to do with mass and natural distribution of stuff. 
So it has a lot more to do with thermodynamics than a spurious correlation between you know the universe and the human brain. Next is something to do with the wise reasoning. Have you ever came across this term wise reasoning? It's a mindset that can foster positive feelings amid interpersonal conflict that involves recognizing where one's knowledge is lacking, accepting that this I'm not an expert in that field, you know. Uh, acknowledging multiple possible conclusions to a given situation. So there are multiple options that might have resulted in the same situation. So that actually result in less misunderstandings, you know, and contemplating the perspective of others. That is called empathy, isn't it? And seeking a compromise. So wise reasoning helps in relationships. That is what the new study says. Daily physical touch from a romantic partner enhances the well-being particularly among those with attachment anxiety. You know, that is what another new study says. Being on the receiving end of the touch behaviors offered unique benefits compared to the initiating touch. So, so if you are being touched by your romantic partner, chances are high that you feel much better off, you know. So you feel um, relaxed and relieved and less anxious and overall emotional well-being. You know, so that is what the latest study published last month says. Vitamin D supplementation for 12 months appears to improve the cognitive function through reducing oxidative stress regulated by increased telomere length, that is TL, in older adults with mild cognitive impairment, that is MCI. So that means the vitamin D kind of uh, slow down the aging. Remember, telomere length is inversely proportional to the aging. So once you keep on aging, then the telomere length keep on shortening, you know. So that is what the vitamin D supplementation to a certain extent can alleviate it. So yet another reason to include the vitamin D and periodic exposure to sunlight. Exposure to the UVB radiations from sunlight will also enable our body to produce, uh, you know, the vitamin D, isn't it? Vitamin D may be a promising public health strategy to prevent cognitive decline. That is what this new paper says. Dogmatic people are characterized by a belief that their worldview reflects an absolute truth and are often resistant to change their mind. For example, when it comes to the partisan issues, they're really dogmatic, you know, and they think that their worldview is the best among every kind of other worldviews, right? They seek less information and make less accurate judgment as a result, even on the simple matters. That is what the new research about the dogmatic people says. Next story is again about the politics. Conservatives tend to see the expert evidence and personal experience as more equally legitimate than the liberals who put a lot more weight on the scientific perspective. So liberals put a lot of weight on the scientific perspective while conservatives put a lot more uh, weightage towards uh, you know personal experience that is anecdotal evidences and expert evidence mind that in sciences there is no expert but many people believe that the so-called experts statements are uh, really trustworthy but that is not the case in, in the real sciences science is dealing only with you know uh, the absolute truth isn't it objective reality the study adds nuance to the common claim that the conservatives want to hear both sides even for settled science that is not really up for the debate. Even the term settled science is popularly used for uh, the, by the conservatives, isn't it? Bursts of exercise can lead to significant improvements in indicators of metabolic health. That is what the new study says. Burst of exercise means, uh, you know, short duration but intensive. That is exactly what you call it as high intensity interval training, you know, HIIT, like uh, sprint, you know or uh, the scientific seven minutes exercise which i featured in this youtube channel earlier so approximately 12 minutes of acute cardiopulmonary exercise impacted more than 80 percentage of circulating metabolites including pathways linked to a wide range of favorable health outcomes uh, that is what the latest study says that the benefit of hiit so dolphins can consciously slow down their hearts before diving and can even adjust their heart rate depending on how long they plan to dive for. You see that is uh, basically a sympathetic heart system isn't it? The heart rates are in humans we cannot control it. It's just involuntary but for uh, you know for these dolphins they can control even the heart rate that is 
very exciting story isn't it so the findings provide new insights into how marine mammals conserve oxygen and adjust to pressure while uh, diving to avoid the bends very interesting by fostering visitors' feelings of ownership of a public resource, visitors will feel more responsible and donate more money. You know, so it's all about shared responsibility and ownership, friends. So visitors who saw a welcome to your park instead of the park sign felt more ownership and responsibility, were more likely to pick up the trash and donate 34 percentage more you know just a small change in the perspective just instead of uh, the park uh, you know the signboard says welcome to your park you know so that actually gives a huge uh, shift in the perspective very interesting scientists have discovered a new method that makes it possible to transform electricity to hydrogen or chemical products by solely using microwaves remember the existing technology allows the electricity to chemical reaction only through rechargeable or novel battery lithium ion batteries isn't it or nickel cadmium batteries so but of course there are different kinds of batteries are there but in this case is just using microwave energy is very interesting so without any cable or without any type of contact with electrodes so it has got a great potential to store renewable energy and produce both synthetic uh, fuels you know, so this is the piece of information from University of Tokyo. Uh, that's really exciting, isn't it? Coming to the news from the last month, uh, first is COVID-19 treatment vaccine updates. So first is treatments. So not much change. Uh, the Gilead uh, Sciences Remdesivir, we, we have now five candidates at the phase three clinical trials, including Remdesivir. That is, uh, you know, that has already been got limited FDA approval, which we covered the last month. But uh, in this month, the progress is that Remdesivir also got full approval in Japan for usage in the hospitalized patients. Other uh, phase 3 clinical trials include Royvan Sciences, Jim Sulumab, Regenerol Pharmaceuticals 2 Antibody Cocktail, and Eli Lilly's Antibody Against SARS CoV 2 plus Veer Biotechnology. We also have two candidates at phase 2 clinical trials, including Atherosis Multistem. Mark EIDD 2801 that targets a viral replication. Coming to the vaccine updates, well, we have got several good news, isn't it? So we have now four candidates at phase three clinical trial, exactly like the last month, no progress, but uh, this phase three clinical trial results have been published, which shows how much effective these vaccines are. First is Oxford University's AstraZeneca, that is, uh, you know, Chadox and COF2 vaccine. 70 percentage effective on average. And if you look only at the phase two clinical trials, well over 90 percentage uh, is, uh, you know, the effectivity of this uh, vaccine. Moderna Therapeutics, the, the effectivity is 94.5 percentage and BioNTech Pfizer is 90 percentage effective and no vax as well. So we now have got four candidates at phase three clinical trials. And we also have two candidates at phase two clinical trials including Sinovac and CanSino Biologics. Last week, we also saw a story from Kaziranga National Park in Assam that has expanded to include additional 30 square kilometers. You know, so the expansion has got, well, it's a good news for uh, nature lovers, but it's also posed significant challenge with the displacement of the local, uh, you know, human population. Masatoshi Koshiba, the Japanese physicist who won Nobel Prize, and he's a very famous because he he's a discoverer of the neutrinos dies aged 94 years first attempt to grow asafoetida in india there is a hing in hindi is called hing starts at lahol valley in himachal pradesh uh, it's a it's you know it's, it's basically an attempt by uh, csar ihb in palampur indian fossils shed light on the origin of horses rhinos and tapirs ISRO launches EOS-01, that is Earth Observation Satellite. Remember that this is basically uh, the first satellite launch after almost one year post COVID-19. ISRO's IRNSS, that is Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, that is something like, you know, uh, GPS of the United States, gets IMO clearance, that is International Maritime Organization's clearance. Big news. So we are now going to have our own satellite uh, navigation system. Social distancing and mask wearing reduces the spread of COVID-19 have also protected against many other diseases including influenza and respiratory syncytial virus. 
So mask wearing not only protects you from COVID-19 but also from many other diseases. After 16 years, scientists finally have an explanation for the spectacular blue ring nebula. We never know. I mean, till date we have no clue what this blue ring nebula is. Strange kind of thing. So it's, it's basically a nebula on the center of it. There is a star. So now the latest explanation is that this ring is nothing but uh, two cone shaped clouds. You know, and these clouds are formed after a collision. Uh, of the sun, uh, you know, a, a star uh, which is almost identical in shape to the sun. So this this has collided with this star that formed two kind of clouds, you know, and this is nothing but an optical illusion. So what we see it as a ring is, uh, it's not really a ring. That is what the new explanation from the NASA. So NASA study finds Jupiter's icy moon Europa glows in the dark. That is very exciting piece of information. In the dark it glows, something like star, right? What makes it glow? We have no clue. That is what the NASA study says. And, you know, last month we also saw that the black-eared uh, kites, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, so some of these landfill sites in New Delhi area, suburbs of New Delhi, it can fly all the way, it can cross the Himalayas and fly all the way to Uzbekistan and Tajikistan in the Central Asia. So and it can come back. So every year they make this journey. Exciting, isn't it? This uh, the kites, uh, the birds, the raptors. And India also found in the you know the last month in India we found lots of uh, you know the insect and and animal uh, new species discoveries, including uh, all these uh, you know these are nothing but uh, you know moth right the four new moth species and these species is uh, uh, discovered by the ZSI. Uh, scientist, the Zoological Survey of India, and that is why Olepa, one of these moths is named Olepa Zedesi, Z A D E S I Zedesi. Very interesting name. I, I really enjoyed this name uh, to honor the own organization, isn't it? And uh, there's a another burrowing frog, you know. So this is uh, this is named as a Ferotica Bengaluru, and this frog has been discovered in Bangalore. Very interesting, you know. So in the, the metro city, like in Bangalore, finding a new species of burrowing frog is very exciting, isn't it? So another one is uh, uh, a gecko. Uh, the gecko is named as Nimasapsis abasabine and it has been discovered by a, a lecturer in the government science college. Look at that. Uh, might not be well funded, but for taxonomists, you really don't need a lot of money. You know, you need a lot of curiosity, isn't it? So Pratyush Mohapatra, Dr. Pratyush is the discoverer of this new gecko, uh, you know, a very tiny gecko from a temple premises. Uh, the temple is called Jadeshwar Temple. <laughs> very interesting, curiosity driven research, you know. So this uh, story has been featured in today in the BBC's front page. India builds a bridge to help the reptiles cross the road. Uh, this beautiful bridge isn't it uh, well you really don't need a lot of money but see the commitment for preserving the nature is what is being shown in this beautiful figure you know it's a very good i mean positive piece of story isn't it i really enjoyed this story and this particular bridge has been built in uh, you know in charkand amidst a, 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 you know a, a forest so there is basically a, a road so that prevents the exchange of uh, you know these reptiles from both sides of this deep jungle so now this may enable them to cross right to exchange the gene pool very interesting coming to observances of the next month that is this month that is December December 1st today is the World AIDS Day 2nd December is International Day for Abolition of Slavery 3rd December is International Day for Persons with Disabilities 5th December is World Soil Day 5th December again is International Volunteer Day for Social and Economic Development. 9th December is International Anti-Corruption Day. Again on 9th December, International Day for Commemoration and Victims of the Crimes of the Genocide and Prevention of this Crime. 10th December is Human Rights Day. 11th December is International Mountain Day. 12th December is International Universal Health Coverage Day. 18 December is International Migrants Day and 20 December is International Human Solidarity Day. Coming to astronomy related observances in December, second is peak of Fionisid meteor shower. 
Fifth is peak of five Cassiopsid meteor shower. Twelfth is close approach of Moon and Venus. Fourteenth is peak of Gemini meteor shower. Look, so many meteor showers in this month. Fourteenth again is total solar eclipse along Patagonia in uh, Argentina, you know, South America. Sixteenth December is closer approach of the Moon, Jupiter, and Saturn. 21st December is December solstice. So that is where traditionally the sun appears to be, uh, you know, moving towards the southern hemisphere. And this is the, uh, the highest approach, you know, this is the extreme end. So it's basically the midwinter day uh, for the northern hemisphere uh, people like us. And for southern hemisphere, this day, this, this, some December solstice would be more or less the midsummer. Isn't it? So 21st December is the solstice day. So 22nd is a great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. So that Jupiter and Saturn will be, you know, uh, it will be together. You see, it will be conjunction. So it will they will they will start overlapping on that particular day. It's very interesting. Great conjunction. So don't miss out this, uh, you know, celestial drama. So 22nd again is a peak of Ursic meteor shower coming to opportunities for December. So DBT MK Pan Young Researcher Fellowship that is basically a postdoc fellowship is uh, open for from the Department of Biotechnology uh, which promises 75,000 rupees per month and 31st December is a deadline. DST serve power grant for 33 to 35 years deadline is 31st December. Deakin India undergraduate 20 percentage scholarship 15 December is uh, the deadline for the application. So 20 percentage means uh, the Deakin will sponsor 20 percentage of the total cost towards your undergraduate degree. Science Academy Summer Research Fellowship Program deadline extended to 10th December. So you still have few more days left. If you haven't applied, please apply. Uh, SRFP, I got that way back in 2001 and that has immensely shaped my own career. The Goa State Biodiversity Board internship positions are open. So if you are interested to uh, pursue a career in the biodiversity monitoring, so this is an excellent position for you. NIPGR training internships are open. ILS Bhuvaneshwar, that is, uh, you know, Institute of Life Sciences, a very prestigious institute in Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha, uh, has got the PhD program call is open. So as an impact indicator, the PhD call is open now. An AICT a Pragati scheme for girls online application date for the scholarship of RS 50,000 rupees per month is extended further. So all these links are available. Please check the show notes of this video. Uh, you can click on these links to go to all these opportunities. And thanks for watching this episode of the Curiosity. I will see you again in the next year. Uh, that is January 2021. Until then, goodbye.